In this video, I'm going to show you how I redesign lecture slides to make them a little bit more appealing, a little bit more uh, audience friendly, a little more brain slides, brain slides friendly, uh, so that we're not just staring at a wall of text. So this presentation comes from the book Essentials of Strength uh, Training and Conditioning. I taught this university course a couple of years back, and like most textbooks, the publisher provides presentation slides or lecture slide decks that you can just use. The problem is most of them are really poorly designed. I'm not uh, you know, not trying to criticize the publishers, but pretty much what they do is they take a lot of the information from the text and they just put it on the screen as bullet points. And the problem with this, if you've read any of my blog posts or listened to anyone else who talks about presentation design, is that when there's a lot of text on the screen, the student or the audience is having trouble paying attention to the text or to what you are saying. And so from a pedagogical perspective, what you want to do is remove as much uh, cognitive load as you can. So remove the text from the screen when you're going to be speaking it. Um, and so this is just the process that I go through to reduce these down to something a little bit more palatable. palatable. Uh, and this is the example for this particular chapter. These are the slides that I ended up with. Now, these aren't necessarily perfect. Um, this isn't maybe the ideal, but if I ha was short on time, which I was, I had two weeks to prepare for the semester uh, when I took on the course. Um, so I was short on time, wanted to get it just a bit better. I could probably spend an hour or two on each slide deck, and this is kind of what I ended up with. And over time, you can improve it even more. So a couple of notes that I want to make is um, this particular publisher does have some restrictions. Uh, technically, you're not supposed to modify them. Technically, you're not supposed to um, make any changes. But for education purposes and for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how I would go about doing that if I were. I'm not going to distribute these. And in fact, in my course, I didn't distribute the change slides. Instead, I referred to the textbook and recommended that people um, take their own notes. I just think that's a better uh, policy in general anyway, rather than relying on a slide printout. So let's get started. So the first thing that I like to do when uh, when transforming slides, redoing slides, is I like to, first of all, I just like to use Keynote. Um, I work faster in Keynote. It has a lot of better features. Uh, there's a little bit more consistency and control. So I prefer that. You can do a lot of the same things in PowerPoint if you prefer, but first thing I do is I open up in Keynote. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to completely change the theme. I don't like uh, this default theme. There's a lot of real quirky things that you're going to see as we go. So first thing I do is I come over to document and I choose change theme. And you can certainly go with any of the built-in themes that Keynote comes with. I have a lot of custom themes that I've purchased. And then I have a few that I've actually created myself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose, uh, I'm going to do this as close as I can to the example I showed you. And so I used Orion. Now you'll see I have the standard four by three or sort of square presentation, as well as a high definition or a widescreen 16 by nine. I prefer the widescreen, but this is gonna depend a lot on how you're presenting, as well as the, the technology that you have available. If you're presenting online on Zoom, uh, or if otherwise you have more modern presentation tools like a widescreen HD projector, then I certainly would go with high definition. Uh, and you can see my other video about that, how to make your slides widescreen for Zoom. In my case, in this particular situation, I only had the old, an older projector. It, it could do widescreen, but the problem was the, the projector screen that it was using was square and was quite small. And so I tested it, went back and forth a bunch. And any time that I tried to use a wide screen, the slides would be so small that you couldn't read them in the back of the room, even if I was using 36 point font 
And so in my case, in that situation, I opted to stick with the four by three or the standard square uh, presentation template. For this demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and use HD because I prefer that. I'm gonna turn off keep your style changes. I really want at this point, I really want to just kind of reset everything and get rid of any custom styling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say choose. And pretty quickly, it's going to update all of the slides in the deck with some issues. This is something I found out as I was doing this particular publisher's slide deck, is there are a lot of weird things, as you can see. Um, so some images on the screen that, screen that I'm just gonna get rid of. Uh, and then you'll notice here that there's a, a little bit of a problem here with the titling. They didn't use a standard title. Uh, and so this is going to have to be adjusted. So what I'm gonna do here, because this is a title slide, is now I'm gonna switch over to format, and you can see it's using a blank uh, slide template. I'm gonna change that. I want to use um, a title slide, and I'm probably gonna add an image to it, but for now I'm just gonna choose title and subtitle, just very basic. And what you'll see here is that the title isn't actually in the title position, so I'm gonna to have to fix that. Um, so I don't lose anything, I'll start here. I'm gonna select this, what's really the subtitle for this chapter. Just cut that, put it in the subtitle position. Oh, and I have to paste that. So what I just did there is instead of pasting, I actually chose paste and match style. So this is going to reset the styling and make sure it matches the position I'm placing it in. In this case, uh, it's, the white text on a red background rather than the white text on a black background. Uh, now you'll see that I've sort of lost the title. Here we go. So I'm gonna cut that, and then I can delete that box. Then I'm gonna, again, paste and match style for the title and fix any formatting there. Now, um, in this case, there's a couple extra things here. Um, I don't really remember how I did this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've, I'm using the, or the sort of default master for this slide. So I'm going to click reapply master just to see if there's any other elements I'm missing. And there aren't. So I could keep this. I could get rid of it. Um, again, this is the author of uh, this particular chapter. So just a couple other things to fix here. I'm gonna move these things justified left. And then we'll just align these here to the left. And that's fine for now. Again, I'm probably gonna add a photo to this so we'll deal with any changes later. Now what I wanna do is for the most part, all of the other slides are going to be title and bullet. So to start with, I'm just gonna go ahead and make that the case. So I'm gonna select all of these other ones. I'm gonna change the master to a title and bullets. And it looks like that did pretty well. And now the fun begins. Now I go through and I sort of fix everything. Uh, you'll notice on this particular template that I have a header element here. And this is gonna be the same throughout. Now what I could do is I could go to every single slide and I could change that. Or another trick is I can actually edit the template the keynote theme, so I'm, the master slide. So I'm gonna to go to the master slides. Um, on this, I'm gonna actually make this a chapter nine. Then I'll be done, and now you'll see that has changed. And if I go through every other uh, slide, it's gonna be chapter nine. Now, I don't know if chapter nine is the best option. Maybe I want it to be the title, so I maybe want it to be basic nutrition factors and health. You can make that decision for yourself. Um, now, I really don't like having slide numbers, so I'm gonna select all slides, and I'm gonna turn off slide number. I just don't like it. I don't think it's helpful. It's helpful if you print slides out, but I don't do that, so here we go. Um, there's a couple other elements you can see here. Uh, for some reason, there's this text box for continued, and then there's this extra bullet, and we're just gonna get rid of that, and then the font size fixes itself. So that's much better, it's a, a much better size. That's at 32, I can go ahead and make this 36. And then what I wanna do is I'm using uh, text styles here. So these are all the different styles of text. 
And for consistency, I want all the body to be the same. And I prefer 36 point, so I'm going to, I've changed that, and now I'm going to update that so that all across all of my slides, now all of those bullet points are 36 point. So there's consistency there. Now I do want to come back and I like to emphasize um, aspects of the objectives. And usually I just do that with a bold. Uh, you can look under your character styles to see if there's an emphasis. So there's a red bold. In certain cases that might be appropriate. I don't know that I want to do it on here. I just want some subtle emphasis on that. Um, I want to look at these recommendations. So I'm going to highlight those and that's enough. Now let's go on to the next slide. And again, I don't like continued. I think verbally that comes across. I think it again is just too much cognitive load. You can disagree. That's fine. Um, just going to bold a couple of other things here and we'll do that. I'll take more time when I'm actually prepping this. And that's objectives. Now, what I actually do like about what the publisher did here is they actually had these objectives split over a couple of slides. You know, we don't want just long, long lists. For this particular chapter, four bullets total wasn't a big deal. Previous chapters would have like 10 objectives. I also like to indent here, just so I know that where I'm at in sort of the context. All right, now we're getting into kind of more of the uh, the meat of the presentation. And in this case, you know, I, I want to emphasize that now we're going to talk about this section of the chapter. And if you look in the book, this really is a, a bigger section. And so I like to use a section divider. Uh, but if I were to just change this, I'm going to lose a lot of the bullets. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this slide. And then the first one I will make a section title. And then I can fix some of this again, get rid of that. You'll notice I've lost that running header element. So again, I can go into master slides and I can add chapter nine there. And then for all other slides, that'll be updated. Again, I need to remove the slide number. Uh, now what I want to do, this is where we really get into some of the extra features that Keynote has. And that is that I want to go into the presenter notes and I'm going to copy all of this text and I'm going to cut it and paste it into the presenter notes. When I'm just introducing the section, I don't need everybody to see all these sort of subtopics that we're talking about, but I might want to know, okay, just to jog my memory, like here's what's coming. So I've added that in there and then depending on how deep I'm going into uh, this topic, I might actually split these up into a few different slides. So let's see if we get there. Um, there's a key point. So now we're already going to standard nutrition guidelines. So let's say I just want to have a separate slide for each of these topics. Um, so what I'm going to do here is again, I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times. I'm just using keyboard shortcuts now. And first of all, we talk about, uh, Get rid of this text. So I think, okay, so that's it there. Um, there's a lot of extra paragraphs here that I want to get rid of because you can deal with that with proper spacing rather than extra lines. Um, and again, so now we're, now we're kind of talking about some details here. What I might do is just emphasize the board certified specialist in sports dietetics, and then just talk about these points later on. And then I'll probably change this one again, choosing the slide. You know, I might want to have a picture of a sports specialist. Uh, so maybe I choose one of these other slides, like a photo vertical kind of thing, and then we can throw in some images. And then I'm going to just continue through. Uh, we probably don't need that extra one. Again, that's part of that section. Uh, and then there we go. And there's another one. Um, didn't need all of those slides. Here we go. Here's a continuation. Again, I don't like having that. Um, so get rid of the continued. Really what we're talking about now is the responsibilities 
of the registered dietitian. And so actually what I want to do is I want to make that the title. Now, some people differ on this. Um, I don't like having a lots of titles, but in this case, I'm going to make that the title because we know we're still in that section. Here's a key point. Um, this is good. Uh, I like to make the key points even bolder. And so let's see if this theme has one. Um, I could use the quote or the title and caption. Let's see what happens if I do the quote. Okay, so I lose that text. So I'm going to undo that. I want to copy that. And then again, I'm going to change to the quote slide. I think that's probably the best one in this case. And then I'm going to paste it in. Now I don't want the quotes necessarily. Um, and then what I'm going to say here is key point. Because in the original you saw, key point was the emphasis. Well, that's not the emphasis. The, the point we're making is the emphasis. And so again, I can go through here and I can emphasize some things if needed. Um, so I can do some color emphasis and uh, decide on what it is that I really want to emphasize. It might be different for you. And I think that's pretty good. So there's another example. And again, that chapter nine, I'll show another way to do that in a little bit. Uh, again, I like to add photos. This would be a good opportunity to add a photo, perhaps using the photo quote layout. And what's nice now is that if I change that, all my, ch all my formatting stays the same, but then I can go find a picture of a dietitian. Uh, let's see if there's any other examples rather than go through the entire thing. Uh, I want to show some examples of a couple different topics. So this is a good one because we're talking about my plate. Well, okay, but why are we just talking about text then? So what I'm going to do is formatting. I'm going to get rid of this, put it in the presenter notes, and I know that the publisher prevent provided a picture of my plate. So I want to find a nice um, master slide here that will allow me to put that in. In this case, I'm thinking this will probably be the best. And what I'm going to do is now go to the folder that I have these, and there's that figure. And I might have actually just gone on to the internet to find this and place it in there. Now this is getting some funky cropping, so I'm just going to resize it. And there we go. Now, as we talk about standard nutrition guidelines, I have an image to represent my plate, and then I can give the details. Uh, the publisher also included these, uh, these graphs or these tables. And what I've noticed as I've been rebuilding all of these slides is that they're a little bit low quality and there's a little bit of redundancy. So there's the table 9.2 here, table 9.2 in the slide. What I really want to do, if indeed I'm going to discuss this, I want this to be as big as possible. So I'm going to choose what is a full bleed uh, image slide. Let's see. So we've got a couple options here. Let's try this one. And now I'm going to cut that and I'm going to double click into the image placeholder and paste it. And in this case, it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to resize so that it takes up the entire screen. And now you'll notice there's a few elements that are in the way. I can try to just delete those, but a lot of them are going to be part of the template of the master slide. And so in, in this case, probably the easier thing for me to do is to actually just make this a blank slide. And they don't have a truly blank slide. Um, and then what I can do is just paste and resize this to fill the entire screen. So I do this quite a bit for this. And if I don't need that text, then I'll just forget about it and maybe even mask that. And I can move this up a bit, crop out the text on the mask, and then bring this down to the center. All right, so that's a little bit better. So I think that gives you a general idea of how I go through. Uh, I'll find the section slides. In fact, what I usually do is I'll open up the textbook and I'll go through and I'll find each section and I'll make that 
I'll duplicate it first, of course, so I don't lose it, and then make that a section slide. Again, I like using images, uh, and then I'll go through again and just go to the next section so we get to um, just macronutrients. Now we get to vitamins, duplicate that slide, change it to section title, minerals, there we go, make that a section title. And one thing that's nice is actually if you change the view to a light table, and in this case I can also get rid of, uh, get rid of my presenter notes for a moment so that I can zoom in as far as possible. And this is just a way to more quickly go through. I'll duplicate the fluid and electrolytes, make that a section. I'll find, and that's it. So that's the last section. But that's sort of a quicker way to go through. And in that way, I'm finding the structure of the presentation. And then I can go back and figure out what I want to do for each of those. And so just as an example, I'm going to show you, uh, you know, maybe an image for macronutrient. Let's see what I did. I just found a nice salad or something like that. And the way I do that is I'll just go into Safari. And the, the, there's a particular reason I use Safari and not Chrome. I'm going to go to something like Unsplash. And maybe I'll look for a salad. Oh, and here's a problem with Unsplash right now, has not been working with Safari. So I'm going to go to Pexels and come on now. Maybe nothing is working with Safari. And I'll do Salad. Lovely. Uh, that might actually be the one I found before. So I'm just going to find something that represents the topic that I'm covering. Now here's why I choose Safari. I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag. And you can't do that with Chrome. Chrome will actually drop the link instead of the image. But in Safari, I can click and drag the image, switch back over to Keynote, drop it into the placeholder. And there we have it. I can clean up the slide just a little bit. And I'm gonna turn on presenter notes. I will take all that text that's unnecessary and put it here just for my own information. I know I'm going to be talking about the three important classes, which probably will get their own slides here in a little bit, but for, for now, this is all I need to do. And there we go. That's the process that I use to go from some really <laughs> sort of disturbing slides to something more like this. And if I look at this in light table mode, you can get a better idea of sort of what the finished product looks like. Again, rather than text heavy slides, I have some fairly clean, um, visual and minimalistic slides that I find work really quite well for the style of, of lecture and presentation that I give. And so you can see how I did that previously. And those are the steps that I take. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, if you have any particular questions or if there's any type of slide that you're working on that you're finding uh, that you have trouble coming up with a way to make it better, please leave some comments below and we can go back and forth with a couple of ideas. Thanks for watching.